What is going on, folks? We are back again for another edition of this week's show. We got a brand new segment to let everybody know about. Really excited to get into it this week. Sammy, start me up. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. Talking Titans. Ladies and gentlemen, 94 yards. Touchdown, Titans. He is the baddest man in the NFL. And he just took her to the house. The sickest Tennessee Titans podcast. Sick! It's going to be sick. What is up, folks? Welcome back to another edition of the Sick Podcast, Talking Titans. I'm joined always by my two co-hosts, Jarrett and Vin. Jarrett, if I uh, recall correctly, we have a new member of the Sick family and the Titans family as well. Do you want to share yes, with sir. everyone the big news? I uh, gave birth to a baby boy last Wednesday, uh, June 14th at 1144 p.m. Everyone is healthy. Wife is doing fine. And yes, he's going to be a Titans fan. Me and my wife were arguing about it in the hospital bed because we had nothing else to do for four days in the hospital. So we put a Derrick Henry jersey on him. So he's going to be officially a Tennessee Titans fan. I'll tell you what. I mean, you got a wonderful wife to be a Giants fan and allow you to take ownership of your children's uh fan rights right off the bat i mean that that's a tough thing to do and and we appreciate allowing her uh or her allowing you to bring she ain't allowing nothing they're still they're still yeah they're still fighting (laughs) they're still fighting going on but listen the giants got enough fans they got enough championships uh we need all the help we can get so we're happy that uh jace right yeah jace Jace is part of our family now not too late to change it to deandre if we make the move though no, I mean I'll change I'm, his middle name to Hopkins right now if he gets a okay, Super Bowl. Well, like, like I said on Twitter earlier, I I reserve the right. The third son can be named DeAndre, and I will have three beautiful sons. I'll have Jadavion Manfredi, Julio <laughs> Manfredi, and uh, DeAndre uh, Manfredi. So that'll be good. Uh, definitely be fitting. Um, listen, I want to get right into our, our our new segment this week. Um, we waited a while to do this. I, I wanted to do it a long time ago, but. You know, we're very fortunate to have as many great guests as we do. We couldn't fit it in, and uh, we're happy to do it this go-round. So uh, I don't want to waste any time bringing in. Uh, well, first, let's do the segment and uh, show me what we're doing. Let's start. <laughs> Thank you, Sammy. As you can see, we are doing a new segment, Fan Spotlight, where we bring one of our very own fans on the show to talk all things Titans. We got a great, great, great one to start things off. Um, huge fan of his. He's, uh, you know, you, you, you'll see him on Twitter all the time. He has great points. And, and a lot of the things we talk about, we see eye to eye on. So it's always good, at least to start with a, with a fan that, you know, you could see eye to eye with a lot. Um, let's bring him in. Chris, how are you doing tonight, my friend? Hey, how y'all doing? And thank y'all What's for having me. No problem, Absolutely. man. Welcome. Thanks for coming on. Uh, as you might know, Chris, as in it for the kicks on Twitter, um, you know, yep, he he's he's on there often sharing his thoughts, and we appreciate you taking the time out to join us on our first fan spotlight show. Um, right. Absolutely. So let me get right into it. First question I have for you, because you know this is a, a question that we we talk about a lot, and we haven't talked about it a whole lot recently because we're trying to simmer the talks down because it's you know it'll make you go crazy but um you're the general manager of the titans starting tomorrow you have three quarterbacks in the building all with a certain set of skills all in different places of their career uh see where would you go day one week one at the quarterback position if you had it your way Ooh, uh i think i'll be starting ryan Tannehill. i think um I know, like, we have two new quarterbacks in our division, right? So, like, everybody's afraid. But I think I think we improved this offseason. Yes, like, we don't have the receiver help, but I'm still taking Ryan Tannehill. I think him, Rabel, Derrick Henry, I think they can at least get us close to winning our division. So I'm going with 17. Okay. I know Jared's happy to hear that. Oh, of course I am. I mean, if you see my rant last week about 17 being our quarterback, I mean, you you know I'm backing him uh, versus these other I – say, I say rookies, but Malik Willis is not a rookie. But um, moving on to the quarterback position, because we could fight all night, me and Sal, about the quarterback. <laughs> um, 
what do you what, what's your thoughts about this uh deandre hopkins you think he's playing leverage uh with uh, new england you really think he wants to come uh you know back with tim kelly and mike vrabel in tennessee and uh what do you think our chances with that and what our offense would look like uh, see, I guess the stuff that I remember, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but him and B.O.B. have beef, right? Like, uh, so, they say they say a little bit. So it's like, why would he go there? Maybe the money is right. I think we have enough money, but I think he's going to be a Titan. I really do. I think he's going to be a Titan. And I usually am not the optimistic one. I usually think like, oh, no, nah, why would he come to Nashville? Right. But I think he's going to be a Titan. And if so, I mean. He's going to fight for wide receiver one. And I think that's a big thing for him, right? He's he's on a Hall of Fame trajectory. You come here, he's going to get his targets. He's going to eat. So why would he not want to come and eat? You know what I mean? And I, Even, I think about, like, he would rather have Ryan Tannehill throwing the ball or Bailey Zappi and Mac Jones. You know what I mean? So I think he's going to be a tight end, and I think our offense will look a lot better with them, of course. Even if he, even if he isn't um... – wide receiver one he really doesn't have to be because we talked we touched on it last week too Traylon Burks is the young AJ Brown that we hope for right if he just comes in and just plays a role as you know a DeAndre Hopkins that's gonna be huge for this offense because you have Chig you have Josh Wiley you know that that looks a lot better than what we have right now and you have the king behind you so I mean with him being best friends almost with Derrick Henry I think it's just a leverage play him going there because he's familiar with um uh, Bill O'Brien uh, and possibly he, who, who knows he wanted to go to New England, at, you know, for his whole career. I don't know, but I, I think with the Vrabel effect and Ron and how they rolled out the red carpet, mm -hmm. I, I think we really pulled this off. You know, Fourth of July weekend for the fireworks for our fan base. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I think uh, I agree. I mean, he he didn't have to be wide receiver one. I think he'd nah. fight for it. But I mean, even if he comes, he's going to get bracketed. He's going to be the one they spotlight. Because, I mean, no offense to Burks, but he didn't really put up a lot of tape last year. So it's no. like he's not a threat yet. And so we get Hopkins. Burks is going to have a breakout year because oh, yeah. they're not going to be bringing their A guy to go and guard him. So, I mean, we need him. Um, so hopefully it works out. Hopefully. Yeah, we can add it to the list of Julio Jones, Andre Johnson, Randy Moss, all the tight, the great Titans receivers of all time. But no, I tend to agree with you that I think um, I've convinced myself he's coming here. Um, I think he would love to play Houston twice a year. I think Nashville is a much more popping city than, you know, Foxborough, New England, where once October hits, it can get real cold. No state income tax in, in Tennessee. We know he's probably looking for the most money as possible, so he could probably save some money there. The B.O.B. thing I get, but Bill Belichick's also the X factor in this, and I brought up a video of them last week. Them two just showing each other immense amounts of love on the field last year when Hopkins came back, basically saying, you're the best, no, you're the best, no, you're the best. So, you know, you, you never know what could happen, but this team would look a whole lot different with him. I've convinced myself of it as well. Um, but my question is for you, I guess, um, what made you a Titans fan? And, you know, I'm not sure if you're from that area or whatnot, um, but what was one of your main reasons why or your biggest memories growing up as a Titans fan that made you kind of stick with them? I know for a lot of people that are from different areas like Sal and Jared and I, it was Eddie George and Steve McNair. So what was it for you that made the, uh, the two-tone blue, your, your ride or die? So really uh, what reeled me in is, <clears throat> for those that know, I'm an Ohio State fan. So it was Eddie, right? And then the colors, too. That's what always yeah. happened. I always say that, too. As a little kid, <laughs> the tone blues were hard yeah. to absorb. It was pretty. I mean, with the white helmet, it just you couldn't get no better, in my opinion. Yeah. But uh, it kind of just all tied together. My great-grandparents are from Nashville. Okay. And so that kind of helped me lean in that direction, too. And then, like, Chris Johnson came. I mean, Vince Young came. So it's like it Smash just kept and dash right Marcus there. came. I mean, it's just – it just kind of added on to it, and then I eventually became a season ticket holder. It just worked out in that favor, you know. Nice. Nice. Absolutely. And Steve's also a fellow uh, Marcus Mariota supporter, which I obviously uh, very Big much time. appreciate. Time. And we so still you know we're generals. Him. We're generals of the Marcus Mariota culture. We are, yeah. Well, that uh, brigade almost put a target on my back for a long time, but thankfully uh, things have settled down over the later years since I've admitted that he's not realistically a perennial um, 
starting caliber quarterback. He was after, good after he broke his leg his second year. I think it all went a little bit downhill after yeah. that. He wasn't the same player because that second year he was on a tear. Yeah, and, you know, and the thing about him, unfortunately, you watch a lot of his film, and of course, there were certain times where he, you know, let his nuts hang and and, and made some amazing plays, but he played scared a lot. He played a lot of scared football over the years, even before the injuries. Didn't really trust his arm much during his career in Tennessee, and unfortunately, things didn't pan out. But now we got a lot of other options on the table to hopefully take us to the promised land. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, quickly about DeAndre, I mean, listen, the money is pretty much the only thing I think that would even make this a discussion of whether or not he comes here over New England. Um, I don't even think Bill Belichick could convince him. I mean, you look at that division, they're easily the worst team in that division. It's not even close. Um, you know, the AFC is a gauntlet as it is. So if you're going to pick the AFC, you better find a team that has the best path to the playoffs if winning is important. And he said it is. So obviously money talks, but if it's in the within the realm of a couple million dollars uh, with the state income tax not being there in Nashville, uh, I think it's a no-brainer, and obviously has an opportunity to play alongside another guy that's on the come up. Uh, New England does not have that the wide receiver position. Realistically, I think Burks' ceiling is a lot higher than any of the other guys, which takes some heat off of him, obviously, because you want to get as many targets and, and yards as you can. So uh, each night that passes, my optimism raises, but we'll see how things turn out. Uh, another question for you: See, um, as far as the defense is concerned. Uh, a lot of people have uh, still being right there amongst the top 25% of the league in defense, lost some pieces, gained some pieces. Where do you see this team shaping up on the defensive side of the football? And what do you see their ceiling being? Uh, that's a tough, I mean, that's something I think about and I battle with a lot. I still am very concerned with our corners. I just I don't think that they are up to par. I mean, Barley, he's still hurt. I mean, Molden is – I don't even know. I mean, he picked off uh, Levis the other day, right? But he can't stay healthy. Folding is hurt already. So it's like you need corners. You need quality corners. I think our front seven has improved. <clears throat> With Big Jeff, of course, like he's going to carry the load. He's going to be the guy. Autry is back. Uh, but it's just – I don't know. I think we're going to be good top 10 to top 15, but – I'm very concerned about our corners. I can't get over like what AJ Brown did to us last year. It just it lives rent free. Well, I mean, we were we were hurt. And, and to touch on the cornerback position, because I kind of stuck up for them last week a little bit. You have Sean Murphy Bunty coming over from um, Tampa. Um, Tampa, but then I just saw I I couldn't find it really quick. Maybe maybe we'll get it from uh, in the <laughs> middle of the show. But um, Roger McCreary, he he was one of one of the most underrated cornerbacks. Played almost every snap for our defense with Kevin Byer last year, and ranked statistically very good all season long. I mean, he got picked on as the number one corner because all of our other guys were out. But for a rookie stepping in like that is huge. So if you have Sean Murphy Bunting coming over as being a lockdown corner with Christian Fulton and you have those other guys to plug and play, the defense is going to look a lot better, I think, especially at corner too. You can throw Caleb Farley out of the window. We're all, all three of us are done here. I'm sure you are too. That experiment is long gone. So uh, I think we should I, take a play receiver, to be honest with you. It can't get much worse. Well, you, know could, you know what he could do? Take you know what he could do? The guy. safest job. The safest job is him catching the ball, putting it on the ground, and having our kicker kick the ball. That's it. <laughs> the placeholder. Yeah. I, think, uh, I agree. Uh, Roger McCreary, I mean, he got slandered so much last year. Yeah. And he was he was targeted a lot. I like Roger. I think he's going to be fine. I do. But I, I, it's just the injuries. I don't know what it is. But we have been got – I mean, we've gotten hit with this injury bug multiple years in a row. So it's like – yeah, we brought in Murphy Bunting. I think he's going to be fine. But Fulton, I mean, he's already hurt. The same tissue injury, right? So it's like, week. Yeah, it's like already? It's June. Like, what are we, what are we going to do with that in June? So it's like if he's already having that same issue, come September, it just it has me a little worried. It does. It has me concerned. Um, I think with Farley, I think he should go and play safety. I do. I think he should go and play safety. I think he can be rangy enough. He's fast enough, but I mean, he don't stay healthy either, so it doesn't matter either way. I mean, but I think he should go and try out for safety, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, yeah. At, at this point, he hasn't played football for yeah. what four or five years now because he got hurt in college. He sat out for COVID, I think. He's been hurt his first two years in the league, so he hasn't played competitive football for an extended period of time. And 
almost four or five years. Um, see, I don't know. I, I have no faith in him, but I think I have more faith than most. I know you said the front seven. I think it has the potential to be a, a top five unit in the league because you got to remember we're getting um, Landry back. We have Simmons. We have Autry. I think Arden Key is going to surprise a lot of people with how good he's going to be um, on this team. And then we have, you know, good rotational pieces. I think Payer Tart is a, d- a disruptor. Um, you know, we got uh, Rashad Weaver. I think he uh, it showed some improvement last year. But I think this defensive line is going to be nasty. And the corners do worry me a little bit. But when you have a line like that, hopefully it makes life easier for those cornerbacks. Um, but, again, I do think um, it's going to be the strong point of this team. There's not enough firepower on offense to really, you know, keep us in game. So we're going to have to rely on that defense again this year. But I think they have the potential to be a, a top five unit. I think I have more confidence in them than most. But when you have, I think, Simmons, who's a top three defensive tackle buyer, I think is still a top three to five safety. You know, they're going to be hard to count out week in and week out. So I have a question for you all. So I keep seeing about Landry. Do y'all think since he got paid, you think he's going to waiver some? I'm just saying, if they can get out of that deal this year and he doesn't prove himself, he could be a, a cap casualty, in my opinion. If he doesn't come back off this injury, they're not going to pay him $18, $19 million a year if he's not going to give you 12 to 15 sacks a year. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's one of the hardest workers. You, you hear Vrabel saying he's one of the hardest workers. His first injury on the team, he was always reliable for us. Uh, first guy on the field, first guy off the field type of guy. But just to touch on what Vinny was saying with this with this front also, you have Harold Landry, you have Arden Key, and the rotational guys. If, if uh, Rashad Weaver takes that next step and the, and the rookie that we have that everyone's really sleeping on except us on this podcast is Caleb Murphy from Ferris State setting all kinds of records over there. I don't care what what division you're playing in, 29 sacks and 39 and a half uh, tackles for a loss. You're a football player, dude. So Vrabel and Rand found a guy, uh, a diamond in the rough, hopefully. And uh, if, if we have four guys like that, five guys on rotation, this front is going to be like 2019. Yeah, something about it. Oh, no, I'm sorry, so No, it's okay. I, was right. gonna, I thought about it more last week because I know I got a, not backlash from you guys, but when you brought up Fulton – um, you know, I agree with you as well. That soft tissue stuff's getting old. You know, Vrabel um, can't stand it. And I think I said it last week, a name they could have floated in the offseason for a trade. If this team is not looking up to snub by the deadline and they know they're not going to resign him, he's in the last year of his deal. I think we only have four picks this year to recoup some of that draft capital. If he's not staying healthy, don't be surprised if we move him at the deadline for a a fourth, fifth round pick, maybe, in my opinion, if he can stay healthy. Because if he can, premier corner, but it's to the point where we're on year four and he's been on the field, you know, less than more of snaps. Often. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, one Here's of the, the tidbit uh, in there. I, I think, I think, unfortunately, Fulton's going to be a similar situation with Adore Jackson where – uh, because of injury, it just doesn't – the stars don't seem to align to keep him on the team. Now, how he exits, I don't know. Could be trade, could be released. We'll see how things shape up. Uh, but, I, you know, if he doesn't play 13, 14 games this year, I just don't see him being on next year's team. There's just no way these guys, the staff, cares too much about availability, and uh, he just hasn't been. As far as Landry's concerned, I'll be honest with you, I love Harold Landry to death. I don't necessarily think he deserved the contract that he got. Uh, he got a lot of money for a guy that's been in the league four years – he had two stout years, two average years, um, and then you know one Pro Bowl appearance, and all of a sudden you're you're giving him premier edge tackle money or um, edge rusher money. So uh, I hope to God he comes around. I, I don't foresee him having a you know double digit sack year this year. I mean he he missed the entire season last year. You don't just come back. I mean unless you're you know the real top top of the line guys. You know, and Aaron Donald could miss a whole year, and I would assume he comes back if he's healthy and, and wreaks havoc on offensive lines. You know, Landry's probably gonna have some some rust. So um, I hope the regression isn't too much. But you know, I'm not foreseeing another 12 and a half, 12 sack year out of him coming out of the gate. Maybe in a, a year after this one, you know, he has a nice full year under his belt. But we'll see. The money's a lot of money. I mean, for that money, you're paying him to be a double digit sack guy. So Let's just hope he can get as close to that as uh, he can. But uh, moving on, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but my man number seven is 
in training camp, and he's progressed. You can look up to the mofo <laughs> stars all you want, okay? He's impressing a lot of people, people that don't even like him within the Titans media scene as far as, you know, talent level. Are They're even admitting he's looking good. See, I'll start with you. Do you think this guy could possibly throw his hat in the ring and stick around as the legitimate backup coming into this season? Ooh, uh, I hope so, man. I think, I think you saw it. I stood up for Malik. I mean, just as much as anybody. Mm-hmm. Like that Chiefs game. I mean, they were out there just selling him. I hope so. He's looked great. I freaking hope so. I do. I hope so. I think he has a good chance of being QB too. Uh, I think, like I said, I think this year we're going to run with 17, and I think 17's gone next year. And so he might have a shot to start next year. But I think this year he's definitely going to lock in on QB two, in my opinion. Vic, go ahead, man. What do you think? No, I mean, I've heard the, the reports as well. But to me, I mean, it's hard to – everything you see in OTAs and offseason mini camps. You have to take with a grain of salt. I'm a believer in the fact that I don't think he's going to be on the team if they, he shows some promise. And, again, to bring up the lack of draft capital they had, clearly they believe in Willis. They, I mean, uh, Levy's. They traded up for him to get him essentially with the first pick of the second round. So I don't think they're going to stash him on the practice squad. I think if Malik does well and they could fetch a fifth-round pick for him, I wouldn't be surprised to see him on the move because I can't see – you know, the point of trading up to 33 to stash a guy on your practice squad, you know, especially when that's this GM's guy. You know, Ran is a Levy's guy, clearly. Uh, John Robinson was a Malik guy. And he's no longer here. So I got nothing against Malik Wills. I don't. I've wanted a franchise quarterback as bad as every every other Titans fan since RIP, our boy, has is, is, is been gone, McNair. But, you know, I, I don't think he's it. I I wish him nothing but the best, and I think if he could – Titans are hoping that he shows up in in the preseason and they could fetch maybe a fourth or fifth-round pick for him because the kid has talent, and um, quarterbacks are at a premium. So I think if he does well enough, there could be a team willing to take a chance on him. But I can't see, you know, Levis getting stashed on the practice squad because you know they're not dressing three quarterbacks. So you're going to have to stash him on the practice squad, and to move up to 33 to do that – I just don't see it. So, is, isn't there a new rule this year where you can dress three and not not take up an extra spot on the roster? Yeah, yeah. is that going to be implemented this year? Yeah. Okay. As far as I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah. Then, then maybe, but still, I, I think you know. I just think he's their guy. He's 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 a Carthon guy. You don't trade up to 33 to to to, to sit a guy. I just don't think you do that. Um, but we'll see. The stars will align where they align. And if he's the two, and listen, if he gets in, I'm not wishing for him to do bad. I just, you know, I think that was a short project, and I don't think he's going to be on the Titans much longer. Well, listen, when he came out, there's a couple of things with Malik Willis. Love the guy. Love his ability. It's just sometimes it doesn't transition to the NFL. But the big part about that was was Todd Downing. We all know that. Todd Downing ruined a lot of people with Derek Carr in Oakland and transferred right over to Ryan Tannehill and it transferred right over to Malik Willis. So, yeah, I, I would say, yes, give him another shot. They're not trading him. They're not releasing him. He's going to be on the roster. They're carrying three quarterbacks every year because our injury bug is terrible. So they're not going to give up on that because if if seven – or, or, or uh, I mean, if, if Will, is, Will Levis or uh, Malik Willis are the quarterback next year, there's your two quarterbacks. So uh, 17's gone. So they're they're keeping them. They're not they're not stupid. You know, uh, Rand Rand has quarterbacks like he was in San Francisco with Brock Purdy and Garoppolo, and you know that, now they got Trey Lance and and Sam uh, Darnold. So he's he's staying. Listen, I I think if nothing else, the guy just deserves another chance just based on the fact that he had the worst offensive line arguably in history and he had no offensive coordinator. Um, Previous guests we had on, Todd. Time out. Stop. Stop. What? Stop. Well, then why are you bitching about Ryan Tannehill then? Because Ryan Tannehill folded under pressure when he didn't have those issues. Oh my God! Here we go. Just end the conversation. We're going to forget forget about. We're going to forget the fact that he dropped five in a row before he even got hurt. Before he even got hurt, we're going to forget that he j- single handedly, you know, he was the Batman. Downing was the Robin for our collapse in 2020. We're going to forget all about that now. No, I'm not. Or 2021, I should say. I'm not doing it. I'm sorry. He, he I, we, we made them. If we're going to make, the, I make the excuses for Tannehill about when there any everyone else around him fails. Okay. 
The fact of the matter is every playoff game, like I've said, week in and week out, every playoff game he's been in, he's had it all. He's had enough protection. He's had weapons. He's had a running back that's tried to carry them. And when the lights are the brightest, he's done. He can't fucking do it. So that doesn't apply. I'm talking about um, – this kid getting a chance to perform in a normal NFL setting. Okay. Tannehill had three other years before Malik stepped foot in this building to ruin his, his, his relationship with me. Like he could give a shit anyway, but that's a completely different story. So I, I think he deserves a chance with a normal, with a normal coordinator, normal protection to see what he can do. I've seen what Tannehill can do with normal protection and a normal coordinator. He'll take you to playoffs and shit to bed when his running back can't run for 250 yards. So that's all I'm saying about that. See what you started, Jared, and got Sal. And so I said, seven well, yeah. quarterbacks. We'll, we'll, we'll do this. We'll do this. We did long. the Zach Morris oh, timeout. That's what got me. Robin. That's what got me riled up. <laughs> Nobody gives. Listen, I let it slide to shut your mouth yesterday. You're not doing the Zach <laughs> Morris timeout to me either. Okay, we're not. We're not oh, saved by the bell go. here. Here we go. All right. Um, listen, uh, we have a, another segment that we do all, with all of our guests. Um, for first time ever, I'm the one in charge of it. Can't wait to do what you see for the first time. Sammy, why don't you show us what we're getting into next? Think fast. All right, Chris, I'm going to shoot some questions out at you while you're instant reaction on what you hear. And, uh, it'll be a nice way to get to know you a little bit better. First off, favorite athlete ever, not on one of your favorite professional teams. Uh, Reggie Bush. Ooh, that's a good one. Fair movie of all time. Or best, the, your best, you know, I know it's a tough question, oh, but man. if you had to guess. Ooh, man. All time. Probably, um, I don't know. That's a, t- <laughs> let me, uh, first great movie that comes to your, to your mind. First movie that comes to my head. Uh, probably national security. I don't know if you've mm. seen that. Chris, uh, I Martin. Have. Martin Lawrence. Great movie. Uh, dream car. Um, hmm, probably a Mercy Lago. Hmm. Previous Titan that you could put in their prime on this year's team. Previous Titan. Or Euler. If you want to go way back, Ooh. just for shits. Right, Derek Mason. Oh, he's my guy. Absolutely yeah. my guy. He is. Um, this is kind of a do over. We asked somebody this a few weeks ago, but go to post game beer. I'm a platinum guy, I love me a good platinum. Mm. Platinums are great, platinums are great. Uh, and last but not least, first childhood crush Topanga. Topanga. Oh, wow, didn't somebody else say that too? No, I said, Miss, I said, Aunt Becky. Oh, Aunt yeah. Becky, mm. Aunt Becky, absolutely. All right, Chris. Well, listen, uh, we gratefully appreciate you stopping in with us tonight and taking a little bit of time out of it to talk Titans. Absolutely going to have you back on probably maybe next time we have an awful loss. We'll bring you in for a little group therapy session, uh, but uh, we want to keep you in touch with us along the way. And uh, definitely thank you for joining in. And hopefully uh, we'll have some positive things to talk about once the fall rolls around. Hey, no problem. I really appreciate y'all. Real quick, uh, if y'all follow me on Twitter, if y'all don't, add sign edit for the kicks. I really appreciate y'all. Congrats on the baby, dude. That's thank you, thank you. I appreciate it, man. And I really appreciate y'all having me. Absolutely, a lot of fun. Chris, have a great night, man. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Peace. Take care, man. All right, I was Chris in for the kicks on Twitter. Definitely go check him out. Uh, one of the more level-headed Titan fans out there. Listen, guy Bro. puts his opinion out there all the time, uh, but he's you know always uh, professional about it, class act all the way, top to bottom. So, Chris, uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and uh, we look forward to having you on the show um, down the road. But uh, listen, guys, we're getting closer and closer. Summer's here. It's going to be week one before we know it. Um, and like training, I said, training camp is on knocking. It's knocking, man. I just, and, and listen, I, I I want something to hang my hat on. You know, that's all I want. Like I said to you guys last week, if we got DeAndre Hopkins, I'd go to bed at night with a sliver of hope that maybe if we get in, we get a home playoff game with a division title, um, that this guy can finally. Then the revenge tour for Ryan Tannehill can only start and end in the playoffs. There's no fucking revenge tour in that regular season because he's done it all. 
He's done it all in the regular season. He's led a team to a number one seed in the AFC. He's won multiple AFC South championships. That's done. Okay, his redemption tour starts at the very end of December, early January, and uh, you know that is when I'll start giving him all the props in the world. And I think you guys can agree with me on that, even you, Jared. No, I mean, listen, I think it's his last year's contract. He's got a lot to prove. He knows he screwed up uh, in the in the divisional round against um, Kansas, not Kansas City, Cincinnati, no, Cincinnati. 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 You know, you know, he did that. I think he's out. Um, I think he's gunning for something this year. And like you said, he, he's the only veteran quarterback in the AFC South right now. So he, he's dealing with a lot of rookies. He's been here. He's under variable. I think we're going to get it done. I, I think you could put Lawrence in a veteran category now, though. Not yet. He's been yeah. in the he's playoffs. Good. He's, he's good. He's playoffs. great. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't think DeAndre Hopkins is making his decision until training camp, though. I don't think he wants to go to training camp beginning to end. I think – He's done with that. I think he, he he wants to pick and choose. You know, maybe let the situation dictate itself a little bit. There a lot of things happen in training camp. Receivers go down. You know, he might want to take more visits. We don't know what he's thinking. Yeah, what what's with that? Because so far it's just us two. So yeah, I mean, you would think Buffalo, maybe you would think uh, Kansas City, but they don't really have any money to give them unless they move it around. So we're his only two visits on the books. I just don't think he's. I think he's going to take his time with it. Maybe let training camp start. And he's not looking to, um, you know, just yeah, – uh, he's, he's not busting his ass trying to make the 50. Yeah. He wants to cruise to the regular season. Yeah, yeah, and here's the unfortunate thing. You know, he doesn't have to take a visit to sign with the team. You know, no, he, doesn't, no, he, doesn't. he doesn't need to visit Buffalo to know that he, he goes on the Buffalo Bills and he's going to be in the playoffs, you know. So, um, you know, I, I, I do I, – the first stone was having him come down. He would not have come down if he had no – remote intentions of joining this team. So that's the first step. People said there were never, no shot he would ever consider coming here. Obviously, that's wrong. Obviously, the money isn't as important as he originally said. The money's uh, not I'm the sorry, issue. I'm sorry, I'm money. sorry. I said yeah. that incorrectly. I misspoke. Obviously, the winning isn't as important as he originally said because he visited two teams, although with possible contention aspirations and within their division, realistically have zero chance well, not zero chance, but not highly liking the Super Bowl favorites. So I don't think the winning aspect that he originally said that you heard through the reports uh, is as high up on the totem pole. So with that being said, the money can be it. And you got to throw every dollar you can at this guy. I mean, he, like we've said, this guy takes us from a joke to legitimate AFC South contenders, which is your ultimate goal to try to win three games against the Super Bowl. What do you think that contract looks like for him eventually? You think it's a – two for 16 with up to 20 with incentives, you know, you just, no one's going to pay him. I think 13, 14, 15 million a year. Uh, he's got to get 10. He's yeah. getting 10 at least. He's getting at least 10. Yeah. I mean, it's going to look like a lot like the old Odell Beckham with the incentives and everything like that. So I think it's somewhere within the range of 10. Well, Odell got 18, didn't he? For one year. Uh, I don't he know. Got a lot. He got a lot of money for. for yeah, but he for also can. He also can make a lot with the incentives too. I don't know the uh, the details to it, but even for the two uh, two years for the sixteen million plus incentives yeah, to get him up to two for twenty with some incentives, you know, yeah. that dollars yeah. stretch longer in Tennessee. Than listen, was, listen. If they extend Derrick Henry and they extend like a Harold Landry and turn something to a signing bonus, I'm not a really a cap kind of guy, but you can move money, man. The Rams did it. With yeah. all those all stars on the team, so uh, the the cap is fake. We all know that. Yeah. They, yeah. they they extended an offer, so they you know we can do it. It's a fifteen million dollar deal with potential to reach up to eighteen. So the, the, he's he's not getting that, which realistically speaking is insane because if he deserves that contract more than Odell Beckham Jr. surely does. Yeah. Um, but I just I don't see the market this late into the off season where some team's going to come out of thin air and provide a $15 million a year contract. I no. could be wrong, um, but he's getting at least 10. He's getting at least 10. And frankly, I think what he's going to wind up signing the dotted line is something along the lines of, uh, you know, two years, 24 million, something around there, you know, and that's just a bullet you might have to bite. And I don't think it's that big of a bullet, to be honest. Like I've said previously, Fully even if guaranteed. he is, even if he is, even if he is another Julio Jones, exact situation. It's worth the goddamn risk, okay? You have You're not going to have point. first round picks to get him. Yeah. You're paying a few extra dollars for a guy that could possibly get hurt and he's 30 years old. Oh, well. Oh, well. 
I would even say this is better than the Julio situation because Julio had been nicked up for years throughout his career with ankles, with, you know, knickknack injuries where Hopkins really has stayed on the field aside from the suspension. And he's, Julio was definitely older than 31 when we signed him. He had to yeah, be. I think he was 32 when we signed him. Well, yeah. So oh, he's, he's 34. So he was 33. Yeah, he was about 32. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say this is even, you're going to get DeAndre a little bit, you know, healthier, a little bit younger. And we're still not mad about the Julio thing. You took a fucking shot. You know what no. I mean? By all means, I'd much rather you take a shot. And it was awesome to have Julio Jones on our team yeah. and work out. But, you know, you can't you can't think like that, in my opinion. What if he's another Julio? What if he's another, you know, whoever the fuck? I, I, I think you got to make it happen. And we've talked ourselves into it at this point. You know, I think if it's truly down to New England and Tennessee, not to say it's a no-brainer because you can go play with Belichick, but – just about every other, you know, pro, you know, outweighs any other con in, in, in Tennessee. It's it's a nicer, more beautiful city, nicer weather. You can make more money. You have more talent on your team. It's a winnable division. You get your two revenge games against the team that traded you. I mean, you get to reunite with Vrabel. I mean, Tim Kelly. Me, yeah, Tim Kelly, to me, that just the pros outweigh the cons, you know. Houston revenge? Yeah. You I know the division already? I said Houston Revenge, so clearly Sal was paying attention. You know, I'm but, sorry. Yeah, I'm thinking about food. You know that. Yeah, but don't we? Don't we know it? Don't we know? I mean, it? I mean, either way, if it comes down to us, us two, he's played with both coordinators, yeah. so he doesn't need to know the offense because he knows both of them already. So I really think it comes down to, like you said, the defense. We have it. Stability, ownership. We got it. We got much a great head coach. Division, much more winnable division. Listen, I said when John Robinson signed Julio Jones, I went on record and saying, and this, I think it might have been in a video I did. I will never, ever, ever say anything bad about this guy again. I begged, pleaded, you know, campaigned hours, days, weeks to get this guy. He got him. Then the guy decided to go ahead and trade the best receiver this franchise has ever had in his rookie contract. And that, of course, imploded all of that but you know that was a move nobody could be upset about everyone and their mother was on board with it including the players on the team of course um and uh this isn't this he, you could argue deandre to this team is even more important than we believed julio would have been to that 2020 team so yeah. or 21 i'm sorry so you know it has to happen and you just have to have faith that rank carthon mike Vrabel and company because of the lack of of capital they put in the draft, the wide receiver, that they had some sort of magical eight ball that they knew this was going to be a possibility and they're going to do everything and anything in their power to get this guy in this team because this guy in this team, if Ryan Tannehill can be an above-average quarterback, which I don't believe he can be, but if he can be, then this team could possibly be a Super Bowl contender with the defense, with Derrick Henry hopefully being at least 90% of what we're used to seeing him, and then sky's the limit. But uh, it starts with DeAndre getting here. And time will tell. You know, it's uh, training camp's going to be here in a blink of an eye, and hopefully we'll have some more answers. So, um, as always, time flies when you're having fun. We're going to wrap up tonight. Anything that you, either of you want to add before we uh, roll through and uh, get into the week? Absolutely not. Just congrats again to Jarrett. You know, three boys over there, two more. You got a basketball team, but we're done. It's God. Over. <laughs> I'm God passing bless. the torch to you guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, happy, healthy. But uh, other than that, though, make sure when you're shopping Manscaped, use our code Sick Titans for 20% off and free shipping. I know uh, I was pitching it to some family members yesterday on Father's Day. So, you know, Sick Titans, 20% off when you're shopping Manscaped. Do yourself a favor. Do your significant other a favor. Go buy some Manscaped. Absolutely. They're uh... – Happy supporters of us, and we're supporters of that. Make sure you check out Manscape and uh, get all your uh, family jewel grooming tools there. I'm a constant user of their body wash. Excellent body wash. By very <laughs> underrated, very underrated body wash. People don't know about it. Go get it. it smells fantastic. Listen, guys. Uh, as always, make sure you like, subscribe, comment. You know, I I don't mention this as much in the previous shows, but. We want to hear everything you guys have to say. Make sure you comment uh, what your yeah. thoughts are and what we talk Ash about. Us, agree, agree Ash us, agree us. Listen, call me a cokehead. Tell me I'm a fucking, you know, uh, jittery piece of shit who doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. I don't care. Just just comment. Get that algorithm up. We're looking to grow. We need all the help we can get. And uh, we appreciate any of the dialogue that you guys want to share with us on that. We're going to try to get more get, uh, fans on, uh, you know, later weeks as you know, the guests, uh, we've had as many people as we can think of as guests. So it's time to get some more fans around. But 
Um, as always, guys, make sure you have a great night, great day, great week, and I'll see everyone on the flip. Sammy, whoop. As always, tighten up. You almost got me there. Sheesh, that would have been, God forbid. Tight up. Cocaine over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sammy, send me out. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast, Talking Titans, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.